Here I'm just going to now review what table functions are. Now before I show you a few examples, the key thing to think about table functions, or the key thing to remember, is that table functions generally just create some additional context for your calculations. So they're either changing a filter or they're adding to the filter uh, the, the, the filters or, or context that are already in place for a calculation. Table functions are just another way to uh, implement this additional context uh, for, for a result. Now I'm going to show you a little trick about how you can uh, visualize what table functions actually do. Because what will happen with most of your, as, as you start writing more advanced attacks, is that table functions all happen virtually and it's very difficult to actually understand or know what is actually going on in your calculations um, via these table functions, right? So what you can do though, just to test your logic or understanding of what table functions do, in the modeling ribbon up the top, you see that you've got new table here. Well, what you can do is you can actually write table functions out straight in this table, a new table uh, feature and you'll see what actually happens to the table. So I'm going to go through the three main table functions by utilizing this feature. And the three main functions are filter, values and all. Now there are other table functions but these are the three main ones that you're going to use as you just start out in Power BI, especially with DAX. So these are the three we're going to cover uh, in this video. Okay, so if I just go new table here, and I'm actually going to jump to the table area where we can actually see the, 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 the data. And the first one I'm going to go through is a filter example. Now, filter is a table function. It's just another way to create a different shaped table to what already exists in your data model. So in this case, I'm going to um, write, uh, write a table, which is asking for. In this case, I'm going to change the shape of the sales table via this filter expression. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I only want a table, I only want a table where the quantity is greater than or equal to two. And so if I push enter now, you're going to see we get the sales table, but everything is filtered out of that table except for where the quantity was two or above. So I push enter and you'll see now that this is just, uh, everything's either three and it will also be, um, two, there'll be some twos in there as well. So if you think about this table is, I think it's about, it becomes about seven and a half thousand rows long. Now if we come to the initial sales table, this is actually 15,000 rows long. So, you, so via that table function, via this table function, we have then contracted down this, this or changed the shape of this table. Okay, so now we can create, um, so now that we understand what additional context we can create through filter, I'm gonna show you another example uh, or another table function called values, which does uh, another, it creates a different type of context or it does it in a, diff, a slightly different way to uh, what filter does. So if I go to the modeling tab, create a new table and I'm gonna go values example. Now in this case, what values does is it creates a table of unique values that, it, that the uh, DAX engine then can iterate over. So if I go equals here, I go values, I want to create a unique list of all of the uh, the product IDs. So I'm going to go find my, um, in the sales table, so I'm going to go to the sales table and then I'm going to just put in a product ID here. Now if you think about this, this column actually is 15,000 rows long, but if I push enter, you'll see that it, this table is now only 101 rows long because what it has done is it, got, it has gone and looked up every single product and then only returned one value per product. So 100, there's 101 products in this case. Now when we place this inside a DAX formula, this actually creates an iteration. So uh, it can then iterate through every single product uh, and then go and evaluate some um, some calculation. Where a, a really good example to think of when you would use this is if you wanted to work out averages per day. So you might want to you might want to uh, see well how how many what's your revenue or what quantity do you sell of a of a particular product per day? Well, this is this is um, a, a this is a function. This is a table function which will allow you to actually do that. 
Now the last one is all. So this is uh, there's 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 a few derivatives of all. There's all all accept and all selected. But in this case, I'm only going to go over all. Now all does actually exactly the same when you place it into uh, this 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 new table feature here. But another way to think about all is it's it's um, remo it removes filters in the current context. Okay, so I'm sure that that doesn't make sense to everyone right now. Um, because there's a number of intricacies around how you actually uh, use these inside of uh, DAX formula. But I wanted to showcase this technique here where you can actually jump and create a new table because it's perfect if you want to understand what's actually going on in these underlying table functions. Now I just want to show you these table functions writing them inside a DAX measure because inside a DAX measure is very different to, uh, well it's a very unique um, and interesting way to um, you know, change the context of calculations by using these table functions. So I just want to show you how you actually um, how, how you actually do that. So let's first use filter. Well, we've already actually used it, right? So I'm not going to go and re reinvent the wheel here. Uh, actually, let's let's get rid of that one and let's instead use this one here because this one actually has it already for us. So you see here that this filter statement, this filter statement goes and looks to the products table and then it uh, then filters for only product one. And then because this new table, this new this table function has been overlaid into our calculation here, all that remains of, of the sales table uh, when uh, this calculation is being done is product one because we have, we have uh, changed the shape of that table entirely via this filter function. But now I want to show you, well, how do we use the values, right? So how do we use values? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go average quantity quantity sold per day. Now this is a perfect example of how you would actually use, use this. So I'm going to go average X in this case, and then I'm going to go values, date. And then I'm going to put in total quantity sold. Now what this is going to calculate is that for and when we put it into this um, into our table here, so this is calculating for every single product how uh, and then for every single day what is the quantity sold. Now there's a little bit to this, but what is happening here is that for product one, DAX is then evaluating through every single day. And uh, for every single day, it's counting up well, how much is the how much quantity has actually been sold, and then at the end of that, it then goes and does this one big average, and that's how we then get this average quantity sold per day. So that's one use of um, values there. And now, lastly, I'm just going to show you how or when you might use the all statement. And so I'm going to go all. I'm going to call this all quantity sold. Now remember that the all statement is, an, is another way of thinking. Think of it as remove remove all filters. So I'm going to go total quantity sold here, and I'm going to go all, and then I'm going to say, well, I don't want any filters or any context coming from the products table. And so if I close this off, you'll see, and then I drag this on, you'll see that we get this 9528 for every single result here, right? And why would we even want to use this? Well, if you think about it, that we may want to work out well, what's the percent, what percent of um, all of our sales actually can be attributed to any individual product, right? And so this is what you would use as an intermediary calc to then, then enable that calculation down the line. So we've gone through a few examples there, but look, this is not uh, this is not a, a master DAX course. This is an introductory course. There's so much more you could actually learn about these, um, but I just wanted to highlight a few things there, a few techniques around table functions and what they actually do, and a few examples, and then hopefully based on these examples, you can um, have a better understanding of what you need to learn next, and, and then um, with a bit of exploration, you can find a number of examples of where these are actually used, and then how you can ultimately get to the calculations. Uh, that you want to get to.